My name is Stan Paddock. I'm a volunteer here at the Computer History Museum. And I want to introduce you to data processing in the 1960s. I'm holding here an IBM punch card. It has 80 columns, so each card is able to hold 80 characters. This was the basis for all data processing up until the 1960s. The card is fed into a key punch and data is punched into it from a printed sheet or whatever else the operator is doing. The machine here is an IBM 026 key punch, very, very common at the time, and the operator would punch the data through and the next car would come up. They punch another card up. While we have four IBM 026s here in our computer room, in reality, people like PG&E and the uh, gas companies and so on would have a room with 150 women sitting down and keep punching the data. When they end up with the cards all punched, the cards are not in a particular order and have to be in order in order to be processed. This is our IBM 083 card sorter. What it will do is it will look at one column at a time and sort the cards into the bins. It sorts one column at a time, so if you have a five-digit number that you're sorting on, you have to make five passes of the cards. Then the operator would pull out the cards. Doggle the cards. Put them back in and push the next column. Now, once you have the cards all in order, you have to merge these new cards in with last month's master deck. Take out the last card from last month and put the new card in. That work is done by an 077 collator. Go. This is our 1939 077 collator. And what we're going to do here is we're feeding in a master deck over here in the first popper. And then we're feeding in the new transactions in the top deck. And what it's going to do is pull the old transactions out and then put the new transactions in. Go ahead, Doc. At the current time, the old transactions are in the search bin, and the new master file with the new transactions inserted into the middle bin. Very tedious and slow job. This is a control panel for the 077. All the programming about what the operator wants to do is done by the placement of these wires. About from which columns they're checking for and what to do on comparison to which way the uh, machines were to behave. To change the program of the machine, you Each different job from the machine would have another control panel like that. This is the master input, where the, the master file is in there. You notice there's multi-colored cards in here. And this is where the transactions are put in. So these cards are merged into this deck. This is the IBM 1401 system. It was first introduced in 1959. It is the first all transistorized uh, data processing computer. The main processing is done in this box. This box is a 1402. It's a combination of a card reader and a card punch. Blank cards are put in here. The card reader is very fast. It reads in 800 cards a minute. When the cards come through, they'll come out in these bins, depending on the program is set, both from the punch and from the reader. 
All of the connections for this machine go into there. There's no electronics in this machine. This is the this is the Fortune 03 high-speed printer. Very, very fast for its time. 600 lines a minute. Prints 130 columns wide. And there is behind my hand here 4,000 locations of memory. Four memory. 4,000 locations isn't necessarily enough. So if you wanted more than that, this box here has another 12,000 or a maximum of 16,000 locations of memory. Not very much by today's standard, a lot by the standards of 1960. Okay, we're going to run a program for you now. One of the advantages of this machine is that it's not limited by how big the numbers are. So you can have a number that is a thousand positions long and it will take it just well. The program we're going to be running is powers of two and it's going to print out two, four, six, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four. And that's as far as I remember, but it knows more than that. Hang on a second while I get the cards loaded. So I'm going to press the load button, which will cause the computer to load the program into memory from the card deck, and then begin to execute. And you'll see the execution by the printing on the printer. on the camera. Can you focus in on the printout? These are the words that describe how you pronounce that number printed across there. While this isn't a very smart machine, it's able to handle large numbers and you can't do that on the PC. systems that were built, 
we know where there are six systems left today. Of the six systems left today, we have four of them. There's two uh, machines in the warehouse, and you see two here. These machines we have are fully functional. This machine came from Germany, which posed its own problems because it runs on 50 cycle power instead of 60 cycle power. We had to install this box over here that converts the 60 cycle power we use in the U.S. to 50 cycle power that this wants. The fact that it generates a lot of heat is part of our problems with it also. This machine sat in a person's garage in Germany for 27 years without heating, without air conditioning, and nothing else. When we got it, it had a lot of rust in it and problems. But over a process of three to four years and many man hours, this was brought to, brought to play. Both these machines have SMS cards. All the logic are on cards like this. This machine has 4,239 of these cards in it. In the process of rebuilding this machine, 137 of those cards had to be replaced. The machine behind me here came from a, a guy's house in Connecticut where he used it in his basis for doing job shop processing. This one was a lot easier because this one was a lot easier because it was American 110 volt power and it had been used as uh, late as 1997. Both machines right now with three tape drives in each machine are fully functional operational. Come on down to the museum and we'd like to show you this stuff up close and personal. Thank you.